Good afternoon, everybody. Richard here from the Sodak Moore Cycle Blog. And I'm going to tell you about me and my wife's epic journey. Okay, maybe not epic, but it was a pretty cool eight-day trip on the motorcycle. I'm going to tell you all about it after this. Alrighty, so you're looking at a couple maps here. What it is here is our is our map out of our vacation that we took. Started on July 21st, left our home here at Piedmont about 5.30 in the morning, and we proceeded on a journey. Now there are two ways to go where we're going to go. Obviously, I've got I-90 through Wyoming highlighted, and actually... What's amazing is these two maps kind of matched up. They're different maps, but uh, the other route is 212 there through Montana. The reason I took I-90 was because there's more settlement on I-90. We went up through Sheraton, or Sheridan, went to Billings. Now at Billings, we stopped at a place called the Burger Dive. And a really awesome place to get a burger. Actually, the... Uh, chef at the burger drive or the the main person who runs the burger drive they won the 2016 world burger championship i think that's what they call it either way he won that and honestly the burgers show the burgers are quite awesome lots of different uh different combinations um also as you see there get your milkshakes too definitely worth it and actually a very good price too it's located in downtown billings which you're in downtown Billings, sorry, but your downtown leaves some to be desired. But that's okay, because you got an awesome burger joint there. Additionally, the burger drive is only, dive is only open Monday through Saturday, and it's a lunch-only deal. So if you're planning on going there, make sure you hit up there during lunch. So we close out the day in Livingston, which you can see is right here. We stayed there, uh, spent the night there at the Connell Lodge, not bad. Um, when we started day two, we started off at the Montana Cup, and they specialize in bagels. So they're located in downtown Livingston, and like I said, awesome place for breakfast. When we left Livingston, we proceeded to Three Forks. We took 287 north from there up through Helena, which that ain't much of a road, although that lake is pretty cool. And then we went on Highway 12 West, up over the pass. We took 141 at Avon. At Avon, we uh, took 141 up to Montana 200 and took that to Montana 83 and followed that all the way up into Kalispell. And day two, of course, that is a pretty scenic route to Kalispell. A lot of stretches on there where I thought where, you know, the, the iconic big sky country, like when you think of Montana, that's what you think of. You know, a lot of places like that. Okay, so once we got to Kalispell, we spent the night there. Well, day three, we did a rafting trip. And we basically, we went through, there's a place in West Glacier. It's called the Glacier Raft Company. They're one of three that do these kind of tours. But uh, that was just one they picked. Pretty good little tour company. Uh, we went on basically uh, what they call whitewater rafting tour. Now, granted, there wasn't much whitewater by the time we got there. I think we got there late in the season, but it was still pretty cool. For 100 bucks, they take you paddling for a day, and they also give you a pretty decent steak dinner on the river, or steak lunch. It was pretty darn good. I was impressed considering it was on the river, and, you know, because we were kind of, you know, on a river, of course, you had to pack everything in and pack everything out, but I thought they did a pretty good job. Tour guides are pretty good uh, 
And you know if you're vegetarian, they'll do veggie burgers. If you want chicken, they'll do chicken. They'll do all kinds of things for you. So it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, company to go with. I would definitely recommend them. Now, once we hit day four, well, we finally hit the big payoff of the trip. That payoff being the going to the Sun Road, as you can see here in green. And honestly, I'm just going to stop talking about it. I'm going to let the video and some pictures here by my lovely wife, Kelly, do some of the talking for you.
reason why a lot of us ride motorcycles. And a lot of it is to, it gives you a very intimate experience with the world. And you still get the advantages of, of course, you know, the fun stuff like the horsepower and all that. You ain't got to pedal your way through it. Uh, but there's also, there's these places in this world on the earth that you kind of see behind me, around me. That, uh, you know, being in a car, it's just not the same. It's not the same in a car. But in a motorcycle, it's oh so cool. By the way, this is Glacier National Park, everybody. And you really should come and check this out. Like I said, there's only so many beautiful places in the world, and this is one of them. And you should be checking it out. We'll see you down the road.
So once we got through Glacier, uh, we continued on. And from St. Mary, we headed south towards a place called Kiowa. Now there was some road construction there. Don't let that put you off. And then additionally, we took Montana Highway 49, which is a pretty cool highway into East Glacier. Now there is a sign right before it that tells you, you know, pavement breakup and motorcycles use caution. But honestly, take your time, go slow. Trust me, it's worth it. It's a pretty cool little road. So once we got to East Glacier Park, we actually hit East Glacier Village before East Glacier Park. And there we stopped at a place called the Whistle Stop. And this place has had a very awesome, awesome little munch menu. You know, typical cafe you'd find in a small town. Kind of good small town feel to it. Uh, prices are pretty good. Additionally, they had a really good huckleberry pie. And of course, because of where we're at, we topped it off with huckleberry ice cream. And let me tell you, it was absolutely delicious. And from there, as you can see, we took Highway 2 here at East Glacier. We followed Highway 2 back into, back to West Glacier, and then we went back through Columbia Falls, back into Kalispell for the night. All right, so a few more notes on Glacier National Park. Uh, it is a very busy park, as you would expect. Uh, it's very popular because it's probably one of the last really backcountry parks. Um, and also that makes it a very busy park because honestly there's one road. There's one road in the park pretty much that's going to the Sun Road. Uh, and that place gets very busy, like way early. We were probably about to Logan Pass at about 9 o'clock in the morning. You'll notice we didn't even stop. That was because we weren't allowed to stop because the parking lot was full. The parking lot was full at 9 in the morning. So if you want to stop at Logan Pass, I'd almost suggest hitting and going to the Sun Road right about daylight. That may be your best way to guarantee you can get there. You are back to our map. All right, so day five, we leave Kalispell, and we took, uh, we took Montana 93 south. We went around uh, Flathead Lake, which is actually a really big lake. Uh, yeah, and actually 93 is a pretty, pretty uh, scenic route all the way down to Missoula. However, we stopped in the uh, town of Pablo, and uh, talking to a, a local there who works for the uh, public transportation there on the uh, Flathead Indian Reservation, he said Highway 93 is a very dangerous highway. And from going down it, I could see why. There's a lot of long straightaways, but you get some dips in there where you don't quite see traffic. And there's a lot of traffic going up and down that little stretch. So uh, he said very much be careful. And I took his word for it because honestly... Uh, He's a local. He works there all the time. Uh, he's up and down 93 all the time. So honestly, I'll take his word for it on that. Uh, really watch out there. Although some pretty scenic area there. And then once you get up here to where you hit two, where 200 meets back up, right into Missoula, is actually some pretty cool little country through there. And honestly, you know, to be honest with you, once we hit the interstate in Missoula, honestly, the interstate through this western part of Montana... Is probably a very beautiful path. Like honestly, it's not a, it's not your typical interstate. It's kind of like Interstate 70 in Central Colorado when you're going up through Aspen and that, or not Aspen, but uh, Vail and that. Very cool, very scenic. Uh, hard to believe you're actually on an interstate sometimes. Uh, but uh, we went through. Um, actually, this little town here called Deer Lodge. You can see right on the map there. Actually, turns out we found a decent. Uh, Thai slash Chinese place. Now, they are not the same thing. So, those of you that think they're the same thing, they are not. They are different types of cooking. Part of the reason why we went in there. And honestly, it's pretty good. Of all places, Little Tiny Deer Lodge, Montana. And we had some pretty good Chinese food. You truly can find... And there was a McDonald's there, too. Which tells me you truly can find decent Chinese and McDonald's in just about every town of this country. Which is kind of awesome, if you think about it. Because I like Chinese food, and... You know, every once in a while I do like McDonald's. So, anyways, we kept going. We went on down to Bozeman. Now, in Bozeman, we checked out a, uh, a first of all, we went and took a look at the Lockhorn Cider House. It was a pretty good little cider house. Not too bad. Had a couple good ciders. Um, also, my wife found the Montana Honey Bee Company, which has got tons of varieties of honey. If you like honey, that's a good place to go check it out. 
So day six, we'd spent the night in Livingston. Of course, we checked out the Montana Cup again, because, once again, awesome bagels. Um, and from there, we took 89 South, and we headed into Yellowstone through Gardner, Montana, and also what they call Paradise Valley. And it's a pretty nice little valley. However, once we got to Montana, oh, by the way, Gardner is where the Roosevelt Arch is. So if you want to check that out, that's where you got to go find it, is up in Gardner, Montana. Um, now, this way seemed to be the most popular route. I think a lot of it is because this is kind of the way to Old Faithful. And also, if you look at Montana, you know, where you got Bozeman, Livingston, you know, Butte, you got a lot more population up here in this area. It's probably a little bit closer and easier to get to the park than here where you've got Cody. And not a lot in the middle there. So I'm sure that's part of it. But anyways, it's a very busy stretch. As you can see, I got a little part circled there. With bad road construction. There's about a five mile stretch. So it's probably a little bit more suited for a dirt bike than a Goldwing. But we managed. Although the Goldwing was a little bit muddy after it. But we got through. Uh, we headed down to Old Faithful. We checked out Old Faithful. And also got front row seats for the eruption, which was pretty awesome. From there, we proceeded to West Thumb. We checked out the West Thumb base, Geyser Basin, which is really, really cool. And it's right up there by the lake. And then basically, we ended the day. We went up to... Uh, Fishing bridge, the fishing bridge where you turn off there, and we took 14, 16, 20 back in the Cody. And we took that through, our, also also this area is known as the North Fork Highway. So we, took, we went through there, and it was a pretty cool place. So once day seven started, we started with breakfast in Cody. At a little place called Our Place. Pretty good little breakfast. Um, reasonably priced. And like I said, pretty good little place to eat. We headed back in the park one last time. There we checked out a uh, pretty awesome little view of the lake. At uh, what's called Lake Butte. And pretty cool overlook. Um, they say on a clear day there you can see the Tetons, which are down here. Um, we probably could see them a little bit. But we couldn't really make them out too bad. There was a little bit of a haze that day. Hi everyone. What I have behind me, as you can tell the sun's right in front of the camera, that's why I'm squinting. Uh, but you have Yellowstone Lake right behind me. We're at one of the lookouts right before it. And it's definitely a beautiful little area of the world. And definitely uh, would suggest you come check this place out because it is pretty cool. Even with the traffic and all the people, I would definitely check it out. But uh, from there, of course, we did the boat tour at the Bridge Bay Marina, which is approximately where that X is. And we took a cool little boat tour, as you can see.
which was actually a pretty good tour for $18 a person. Uh, went out, checked out one of the islands. Like I said, it was pretty cool. And then we went up and checked out the lower and upper or lower lower Yellowstone Falls, which is pretty cool. And So from the Canyon Visitor Center, we proceeded down to the Mud Geysers, which is also pretty cool. And we finished up the day with Victory Steak back in Cody at Cassie's Supper Club. By the way, Cassie's Supper Club's a really good place to eat. Really good steak, really good prime rib, really good beers. So anyways, on day 8, we left Cody, and we took 14, 16, 20 to Grey Bowl. And we listened to the signs, which said, take 16, it's more scenic. And we went down to Warland, which on the way to Warland, I was starting to think, okay, these guys are really full of it. However, from Warland, we got west of there, past 10 Sleep into 10 Sleep Canyon, which is a really cool little drive. And from there, we hit the pass and went back down into Buffalo. And uh, I don't have any pictures of that. We didn't take any pictures. You're just going to have to take my word for it. But I have taken Highway 14 before, which is okay, but it's I, I definitely agree. 16 is the more scenic route. From Buffalo, we proceeded east on 90, had an uneventful lunch at the Gillette Taco Bell, and proceeded home. So, in the eight days, we covered 2,300 miles, which was a personal record for both me and Kel. And we saw really a lot of cool country, and it was very much worth the trip. However, as I usually am coming home, I was reminded how blessed we are to live where we are in Black Hills, uh, just because we get all kinds of scenic views, and we get to see them every single day. And, you know, as I'm going through places that aren't terribly scenic, I'm always very thankful that Every day I can walk outside and take a small ride and I can see all kinds of awesome views. My goal for every trip is to, and maybe it's tad unreasonable, but my goal for every trip is for it to be better than the last one I've had. Like, I always want it to be better. I always want it to be, if, if we can get it possible, a be, the best trip I've ever had. And I can say this trip, once again, we have achieved that goal. It was probably the best trip I've ever been on. So, and I'm really glad that I got to say that. And also, I can't wait till the next one. Because I know the next one's probably going to be even more awesome. So, we'll leave it at that. We'll see you next time. Thanks for, thanks for spending some time with me. And uh, also, one last special thank you to my wife, the videographer. She took the videos and pictures for... Probably 99.5% of what you see in the video. Special thanks to her. Like I said, see you next time.